three, C three, act three, C three. That's what this is. Oh, act three, scene three, three. Three, three. Oh, okay. Next, I'm on yeah. three, one. Three. One room in the castle. In the queen's closet. Jane rules the present minister, right? Act three, scene three, it starts with Polonius. Really? In my book, it does three. In my book, it starts with a scene three, a room in the castle. We're not doing um, to be or not to be? You guys have said you didn't want to do it. Oh, I do want you to be or not to be. Okay, have it. Get that. back. Act three, scene one. Oh. Jeez, okay. Just a minute. Yeah. I have to. I have to. You want to do the whole get the two and let her ring? Oh, he is here, sure. Hold on, I got to get the. Do. Traffic jam. Are we going to start with that or start Act. at the top of the scene? Top of the scene. Act. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who's Claudius? I was. I was. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, I'd rather you did uh, Polonius. Are we doing Hamlet? Okay. Speak the speech I pray you, that's where it starts? No. Act, Act one. three. Act scene three. one. Scene one. A room in the one. castle. Okay. Starts with the kink. Go for it. And here comes the kink. Ready? Yeah. Wait, are you ready? Yeah, um, maybe something will have to take Rose and Friends. No, I'm going to... Enter Hamlet. To be or not to be. Shall we? No. It's seen. scene one. Okay, King. King. Ready? Are you ready? Is everybody ready? Mm -hmm. Are we all Let's here? Let's jump in whenever you just... Where's the king? Well, I need my um, spy glass. You need this? Ah, yes! Did you, you need double, double no? Up. Not sure? for this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm. Yes, ah, it's you. The good old Sherlock. <laughs> Next. Ready? Okay, here goes. Okay. I can you by no drift to conference uh, get from him uh, whom he put in this confusion. Grating on harshly on his days of quiet with a turbulent and dangerous lunacy. He does confess he feels himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sounded, but with a crafty madness keeps aloof. When should we bring him on to some confession of his true state? Did he receive you well? Most like a gentleman. <laughs> but with much forcing of his disposition. Negative question, but of our demands, most free in his reply. Did you assay him to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out that certain players we o'er wrought on the way of these, we told him, and there does seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. They are about the court, and as I think, they have already ordered this knight to play before him. Uh, Tis most true. And he beseeched me uh, to entreat your majesties to hear and see the matter. With, a, with all my heart, and with doth much content me to hear him so inclined. A good gentleman, uh, give him a further edge, and drive his purpose into these delights. We shall, my lord. Ah! Oh. Is that part of the script? Sweet Gertrude, uh, leave us two, and you have closely sent for Hamlet uh, Hillary, and that he is to work by act may hear a front of Ophelia, her father and myself, lawful uh, espials, and will so bestow ourselves so that, seen unseen, we may of their encounter frankly judge the matter and gather by him as he has behaved, if it be the affection of his love or no, or no that, that thus he suffers for. I shall obey you. Before your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good duties be the happy cause of Hamlet's wildness. So shall I hope your virtues will bring him to his wanted way again, to both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. Hmm. Oh, Ophelia, walk you here. 
gracious and pleasure will we will bestow ourselves. Read on this book that shows such much such an exercise may color your own loneliness. We are off to blame in this. It is too much proven that with devotions, visits and pious action we do show the devil himself. Ah tis true true. How smart. How smart. <laughs> Here we go. A lash that speech doth give my conscience. A harlot's check. Beautiful, beautified with plastering art, is not more ugly to the thing that helps it than this my deed to my most printed word, painted word, O oh, heavy brethren. Oh, I hear her coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. To be or not to be. That is the question. Hey, I'm I'm fine doing it. You just well, so <laughs> you do it then. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the third. It's okay. No, because the name is down here. That's why. Oh, go that's, for it. You can have it for number four. I got for four too. Okay. Oh, you can have five. Uh, four. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay. He was just giving out two parts at one time. Okay. Kenneth Brothers pointing at us. That's right. Okay. Hold He's on. pointing at us. That's right. He's like, okay. Anyway, go for it. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more, and by a sleep we mean to say the heartache, to end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep, ah, Perchance to dream. Ah, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long a life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, pangs of the despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under the weary life, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied over with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pitch and moment, with this regard, the currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Softer now, the Feraphilia, nymph, in thy orisons, be thou sins remembered. Good my lord, how does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you, well, my lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have longed, longed to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, not I. I never gave you aught. My honored lord, you know right well you did, and with them words of so sweet breath composed as made these things more rich. They're perfectly lost. Take these again, for to, to the noble mind rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Ha, ha! 
Are you honest? My lord. Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better com commerce than with honesty? Ay, truly, for the power of beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a broad bod than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. This was some time a paradox, but now the time gives it proof. I do love you once I did. <laughs> Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me, for virtue cannot incul in inoculate our old stock, but we have shall re relish of it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a nunnery. Why, wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do crawling between heaven and earth? We are errant knaves all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Where is your father? At home, my lord. Let the doors be shut upon him, that he may play the fool nowhere but his own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, sweet <laughs> heavens. If thou dost marry, I give thee this plague for a dowry. Be thou as chaste as ice, as pure as snow. Thou shalt not escape calamity. Get thee to a nunnery. Farewell. Or if thou wilt need, needs marry, marry a fool. For wise men know well enough what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery. Go. And quickly too. Farewell. O oh, heavenly powers, restore him. I have n heard of your paintings too. Well enough. God hath given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig, you amble, and you slisp, and nickname God's creatures, and make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to, I'll no more on it. It hath made me mad. I say we will have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one, shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To an unnery, go. What a noble and what a noble mind is here overthrown. The courtiers, soldiers, scholars, eye, tongue, sword, the expectancy and rose of that fair state, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers, white, white down, and I, a lady's most dejected and wretched, that set the honey of his music vows. Now see that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled, out of tune and harsh, that unmatched form and feature of blown youth, blasted with ecstasy. Oh, woe is me, to have seen what I have seen. See what I see. Love, love. Thank you. Oh, his affection, his affections do not uh, what they, do not that way tend, uh, nor what he spoke, though it lacked form of a little, uh, was not like madness. And there's something in his soul, or which his melancholy sits in rude, and I do doubt the hatch and the disclose will be some danger, which for to prevent, I have in quiet determination thus set it down. He shall with speed to England. Yes, for the demand of your neglected tribute, haply the seas and the countries different with variable objects it shall expel that sometimes settled matter in his heart, and whereon his brains will beating put him thus from fashion of himself. 
but stay you to it. Hmm. Well, I mean, never will. But uh, yet I do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. How no, Vilya? You need not tell us what Lord Hamlet said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please, but if you hold it fit off to the play, I'll turn the page and tell you, let this queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be round with him. And I'll be placed, so please you, in the ear of all their conference. If she find him not, to England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness and great ones must not unmatch go. Yay. <coughs> Yay. Yay. The hall. A hall in the castle. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hamlet. Oh. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of your players do, I had as leaf the town crier spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air so much with your hands thus, but use all gently, for in the very torrent, tempest, and, as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious periwig painted fellow tear a passion to tatters, to fairy rags, to split the ears of groundlings who, for the most part, are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. I would have such a fellow whipped for overdoing the termagant. It out Herod's Herod, I pray you, avoid it. I warn your honor. Mm -hmm. Be not too tame, neither. For let your own discretion be your tutor. Suit the action to the word, the word to the action, with this special observance, that you o'erstep not modesty of nature. For anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing whose end, both at the first and now, was and is to hold, as twere, the mirror up to nature, to show virtue, her own feature, scorn, her own image, and the very age and body of the time of his form and pressure. Now, this overdone, or comely tardy off, though it make the unskillful laugh, cannot but make the judicious grieve and censure, out of which one must in your allowance or way a whole theater of others. Ah, there be players that I have seen play and heard of others praise that highly, not to speak it profanely, but neither having the accent of Christians nor the gait of Christian, pagan, or man, that have so strutted and bellowed that I have thought some of nature's journeymen have made men and not made them all well. They imitated humanity so abominably. I hope we have reformed that indifferently with us. Oh, reform it altogether and let those play your clowns speak no more than is set down for them, for there be of them that will them that will themselves laugh. <clears throat> to set on some quality of barren spectators to laugh too, though in the meantime some necessi some necessary question of the play be then to be considered that's villainous and shows a most pitiful ambition in the fool that uses it. Go, make go make yourself ready. And now, my lord. Will the king hear this piece of work? And the queen, too, and that perfectly. Bid the players make haste. Who will... Uh, will you, too, help to hasten them? We will, my yeah. lord. Whoa, Horatio! Here, sweet lord, at your service. Horatio, 
Thou art in, uh, in as <laughs> Ian as just a man, as ever my conversation copped with all. Oh, my dear Lord. Nay, do not think I flatter, for what advancement may I hope from thee, that no revenue hast but thy good spirits to feed and clothe thee? Why should the poor be flattered? No, let the candy dung lick absurd pomp, and the crook and pregnant hinges to the knee, where thrift may follow fawning. Thou, thou, thou here? Since my dear soul was mistress of her choice, and could of men distinguish her election, Shaft sealed thee for herself, for thou hast been as one in suffering all, that suffering suffers nothing. A man that fortune's buffets and rewards hath taken with equal thanks, and blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well co-meddled, that they are not a pipe of fortune's finger to sound what stop she please. Give me that man that is not passion's slave, and I will wear him in my heart's core, I in my heart of heart, as I do thee. Something too much of this. There is a play tonight before the king. One scene of it comes near the circumstance which I have told thee of my father's death. I prithee, when thou seest the act of foot, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe my uncle. If his occulted guilt does not itself unkennel in one's speech, it is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as Vulcan's stilfly. Give him heedful note, for I, mine eyes, will rivet to his face, and after we will both our judgments join in censure of his seeming. Well, my lord, mm -hmm. if a steel you want the I don't know whilst this play is playing and and escape detecting, I will pay the theft. They are coming to the play. I must be idle. Get you a place. How oh, fares our cousin Hamlet? Excellent faith, and of the uh, chameleon's dish. I eat the air, promise crammed. You cannot feed capon so. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I have nothing with that answer, Hamlet, but those words are not mine. <laughs> Yours? Well, mine. No, nor mine now. Uh, My lord, <laughs> you played once in the university, say you? Uh, that did I, my lord, and I was a kind of good actor. What did you enact? I did enact the Julius Caesar. I was killed in the capital. Brutus killed me. Mm. It was a brute part of him to kill so capital of a calf there. Be the players ready. Aye, my lord. They stay upon your patience. Come hither, my dear Hamlet. Sit by me. No, good mother. Here's metal more attractive. Oh, 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 oh. you want that? <laughs> Lady, shall I lie in your lap? No, my lord. I mean... My head upon your lap. Aye, my lord. Do you think I meant country matters? I think nothing, my lord. Ooh. Ooh. That's a fair thought to lie between the maid's legs. What is, my lord? Nothing. You are merry, my lord. Who, I? I, my lord. Oh, God. Only your jig maker. What should a man do but be merry? For look you how cheerfully my mother looks, and how my father died within two hours. Nay, tis twice too much, my lord. So long? Oh, nay then, let the devil wear black, for I'll have a suit of sables. Oh, heavens, died two months ago, and not forgotten yet. There is hope for a great man's memory may outlive his life mm, half a year. But, by lady, he must build churches then, or else shall he suffer not thinking on. With the hobby horse, whose epitaph is... For oh, for oh, the hobby horse is forgot. 
Shall we skip the done show? Okay. Because there's okay. all sorts of extra speaking in there that we may as well ignore. But okay. then comes um, the guy that pours the poison in the king's ear, and then they exit, and he pours the poison into the sleeper's ear. Hamlet says, he poisons him in the garden. <laughs> You're having so much fun. <laughs> I am minus my tripod. I noticed. And it blows chunks. Yeah. Well. Did you find that part where he poisons him? That's where I uh, pours the poison into the sleeper's ear. Uh, that's the... Uh, we go through the. It's still in the same scene, but it's after they do the dumb show. You have to. And there's a little skip stage ahead. direction says okay. pours the poison into the sleeper's ear. Okay. Uh, how do you like this play? Yeah, he poisons him in the garden. Is what Hamlet says. Okay. You want to catch that, Mr. Keith? As soon as I find it, <laughs> Mr. You know, Jim. You're going back too far, I think. Where am I? You want to go to the dumb show? And then past all that uh, speaking of the player king and the queen, and then the executioner comes in there and pours, pours the poison into the sleeper's ear. Do you have the number for the line? No, I don't. Yeah. But after what he says, what do you call the play? The mouse trap. Um, it's after that. Oh, oh, okay, I'm there. And then it goes, um, pours the poison into the sleeper's ears. Oh, right there. Yes. He poisons him in the garden for his estate, the name Gazango. The story is extant and written in very choice Italian. If you see how Anon, the number, how the murderer gets the love of Gazanzo's wife. The king rises. What? Frightens with false fire? How fares my lord? Okay. Uh, go over the play. Give me some light! Oh, away! Oh, lights, 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 Why, let this tricking dare go weep for the gathered play, for some must watch while others must sleep. Thus, friends of the world, away! Would not this sit and forest of feathers and the rest of my fortunes turn Turk with me, with two provincial roses on my raised shoes? Give me fellowship and a cry of players, sir? Not a chair. A whole one, I... Thou dost know the name and dear that bears a big glue that drove himself with dear dear a very very puck chop a puck chop <laughs> you might have rhymed. Oh good Horatio, I'll take the ghost's word for a thousand pounds. Just perceive very well, my lord. Upon talk of poisoning, I did very well note him. Aha, come some music, come the recorders. For the king has this comedy, with it is a bit like, you're not purdy. <laughs> Come, some music. Shall we skip the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern silly scene there? Hamlet says, God bless you, sir. Enter Polonius. God bless you, sir. You go all past the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. That's the, the uh, end. Scene two. I'm giving him my book here. God bless you. Okay. Here, I take oh. it. I'll trade books Shoot. with you. God bless you, sir. I, I'll trade books with you. God bless you, sir. Okay, I think I like this book though. Um, uh, I'll just, find it. This way. God bless you, sir. Okay, uh, my lord, the queen would speak to you with you, and presently. Do you see yonder cloud that's almost in shape of a camel? Uh, by the by the mass. Hey. Thank you. But a mess. I just like a camel indeed. He thinks it's a weasel. <laughs> it's a back like a weasel. Oh, like a whale. Very like a whale. Then come with my mother and by and by. They fool me to the top of my bent. I will come by and by. I will say so. By and by is easily said. Leave me, friends. Aye. Tis now the very Thank witching you. time of night. With churchyards yawn <laughs> and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world now I could drink hot blood and do such bitter business as the day would quake to look on soft 
now to my mother. O oh, heart, lose not thy nature. Let not ever the soul of Nero enter this firm bosom. Let me be cruel, not unnatural. I will speak daggers to her, but use none. My tongue and soul in this be hypocrites. How in my words soever she be shent, to give them seals, never my soul content. Scene three, more known. Yes. I like him not, nor stands so safe with us to let his madness rage. Ah, uh, therefore prepare you. I, your commission, will forthwith dispatch. And he to England shall along with you. The terms of our estate may not endure a hazard to, so near us as doth hourly grow out of his graves. We will ourselves provide most holy and religious fear it is to keep those many bodies safe that live and feed upon your majesty. A single and peculiar life is bound with all the strength and armor of the mind to keep itself from noise, but much more than spirit upon those wheel depend and rest the lives of many. The cease of majesty dies not alone, but like a gulf doth draw what's near with it. It is a massy wheel, fixed on the summit of the highest mount, and whose huge spokes ten thousand lesser things are mortized and adjoined which when it falls, each small investment, petty consequence, attends the boisterous ruin. Never alone did the king sigh, but with a general groan. Harm you, I pray you, and to the speedy voyage, for we shall further, shall we, for we will feathers put about this fear, which now goes to the Free-footed. We will haste, haste us. us. And then, and there he is, yes, yes. My lord, he's going to go to his mother's closet. Behind the arras, I'll uh, convey myself to hear the process. I'll warrant she'll tax him home. And as you, as you said, and wisely was it said, to me, that tis meet that the, the more odious than, than a mother. Since nature makes them partial, should forhear the speech of vantage. Very well, my liege. I'll call upon you ere uh, you go to bed and tell you what I know. Thanks, dear my lord. Oh, my offense is rank. Yep. It smells to heaven. It hath the primed eldest curse upon it. A brother's murder. Pray, can I not through inclination be as sharp as will. My stronger guilt defeats my strong intent, and like a man be double business abound, I stand in pause where I shall first begin and both neglect. What if this cursed hand, which uh, thicker than itself with brother's blood, and there it was green enough with the sweet heavens, and wish it were to as snow. Where to serves mercy but to confront the visage of offense? And where in prayer, and where in prayer, but this uh, twofold force, and to the grand, to the grand to the confront this visage of offense, to be forested to air we come to fall, or pardon me down. Then I'll look up, my fault is past. Oh, but oh, my form of prayer can serve my turn. Forgive me my foul murder. That cannot be. Since I am still possessed of those effects for which I did the murder. My crown, mine own ambition, and my queen. 
may one be pardoned and retain the offensive. Ah, uh, in the corrupted currents of this world, offense is guilted and may shove by justice, and oft it is seen the wicked prize itself buys not the law, but tis not to so above. There is no shuffling. There is no, an action lies in this true nature, and we ourselves are compelled even to the heap tea and the forehead of our faults to give in evidence. Within, what rest? Try what repentance can. What can it not? Oh, what can it when it can? One cannot repent. Oh, wretched state. Oh, bosom black as death. Oh, limed soul. That struggling to be free are more engaged. Help, angels, make a say, bow stubborn knees, and with heart with strings of steel, be soft as sinews in the newborn babe. All me will be well. Now might I do it, Pat. Now he is praying. And now I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven. And so I am revenged. That would be scanned. A villain kills my father. And for that, I, his sole son, do the same villain send to heaven. Oh, this is higher in salary, not revenge. He took my father grossly, full of bread, with all his crimes blown broad, a flush as may. And how his audit stands, who knows, save heaven. But in our circumstance, and of course of thought, tis heavy with him. And I am, am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for his passage? No. Up, sword. I know thou a more horrid hent when he is drunk asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed at game, a swearing, or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it. Then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven, that his soul may be as damned and black as hell where it goes. My mother stays, his physic but prolongs thy sickly days. My words fly up, my thoughts remain below. Words without thoughts never to heavens go. Yeah. <laughs> Can I share a quick story? Yes. Sure. Uh, a friend of mine I was doing it for the big thing. The Edward Fessel, can you believe it? And this guy said he had auditioned for a role in Hamlet a few years ago. And this guy was reading for the part in this scene. Uh, he was reading for him and he didn't know how to read it. And instead of saying, Now might I do it, Pat. He went, Now might I do it. <laughs> that was a stage direction. <laughs> <laughs> he did not get cast. <laughs> Not even as Polonius? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he did. You're going to ask him. I, I'm, I'm, I'm.